Waterworld meets Planet of the Apes with sharks. Yeah. This is the shark post-apocalyptic film that came out during Sharknado Week in 2016. But before we get into it, make sure to check out my book, Chomp, which was written in time. Thank God. This is a killer shark book that I wrote, and I'd be honored if anyone would check it out and give me feedback on my second book, my first being Wild Man. The links to purchase it on Amazon on paperback and or Kindle are in the description below. Let's get into the review. The plot. The world has been covered in water. And while the smartest mind is left on the planet trying to make a rocket to help the planet revert back to its original state when people were around, sharks attack little villages on top of the water and are taking out everyone and everything in their path. This idea is really inventive while a bit derivative. This was directed by Mark Atkins, who also directed Sand Sharks, Empire of the Sharks, and Six-Headed Shark Attack, and he does a pretty solid job with this movie. He has sets and everything that makes it look really, really cool. For the characters, we have Dylan Barrick, played by Brandon Arrett from Tremors 5 Bloodlines and Six-Headed Shark Attack. He's kind of the gruff pirate character who turns actually to a caring human being rather quickly and a bit unnaturally, but fitting enough. Dr. Shane Nichols, played by Stephanie Barron, is the scientist who is probably the smartest one out of the bunch, and she can also kick buttons during scenes where she's gliding with a parasail across the ocean, trying to avoid the sharks and to get a probe. I needed that. Dr. Royshaw, played by Lindsay Sullivan, who played in Monster Island, which was also directed by Mark Atkins, is the head honcho. She's the one in charge of everything. She makes the tough calls, but she doesn't seem to really care. I mean, she makes these tough calls and she's like, we don't have a time, we have to do it. There's no other option. You have 20 minutes. What? Dr. Caroline Monroe... Monroe? Seriously? Played by Christina Visser from Dead in the Water, which also had Brandon Arrett, is the scientist who's by another scientist side, who uh, I'll get to in a minute, but I don't know what she is. She's just another character who's able to be at the base. I mean, I guess they needed two people to accomplish what they wanted to, but I don't know. She's just, just kind of there for eye candy, I guess. Hideo Ashiro, who's obviously supposed to be a Japanese character is played by the very African or Australian trying to play a British guy, John B. Swartz. Joanne D'Amato, played by Angie Theodora Deck from Zombie Tidal Wave, is the kick-butt character, I suppose. She only proves her kick-butt nature by killing a few sharks. She just that's it. She doesn't do much else besides smart-mouthing everybody else, and I kind of hated her character. She has a very fake southern accent, too, but live and learn. Pretty much all the characters have names that are references. Dr. Roy Shaw, like in Jaws, Dr. Hooper, Robert Shaw, and Roy Scheider, who played Quentin Brody. Dr. Caroline Monroe, like Caroline Monroe, who also played in Star Crash and Slaughter High, amongst many other 70s and 80s movies. Joanne D. Amato, like Joe D'Amato, who directed Anthropophagus and Absurd. I thought that was a nice touch. The sets they made these little shacks and huts and shot them from low angles to make everything seem larger and in more of an abundance. There are three places they go back and forth from. A fishing village, a defensive area and a research and mechanics station. All three of them are different looking. They're not all the same, which is nice. I mean, some of them do kind of look the same, but the research and mechanics station is definitely the highlight in terms of 
differences. There are some problems I have with this movie though, like everything is over explained. And they explain things like two or three times and it's like, what the hell? There's too much techno and science babble. Eventually they're gonna be like, yeah, we get it. Move on. It makes the pacing drag at times, like seriously drag. The gore, the effects, we get a sweet decapitation. And some bloody bites, but nothing too much. But a decent amount. The sharks look like crap for the most part. The CG sets are decent, and the tsunami scene is hilarious. You don't feel the weight of the wave, but you do feel the weight in your belly from all the laughter. Scott Wheeler, who also directed Avalanche Sharks, supervised the visual effects. He also did that for Sand Sharks, Avalanche Sharks, Poseidon Rex, etc, etc. They're not terrible here, they just sometimes needed a bit of a touch-up. The motion picture soundtrack, there are some epic choir sections and other intense themes. The war cry or song or whatever that the hunters sing before they try to kill the sharks is pretty goofy. Kai's Al Atraki and Brian Railston do compose some pretty decent themes here. I also like the upbeat theme at the ending. This was a subpar shark movie with above par sets which the sets and the locations are awesome. I also love that this has its own little world it's built. I still have a problem with some of the pacing, dialogue, and effects, but I'd still say give this one a watch if you want a serious shark movie that is just crazy enough to be semi-entertaining. Overall, I give Planet of the Sharks a 1.5 out of 5. It was so close, so close to getting a 2. Thank you all for watching, and I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page, and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, you get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restrictions. Also, hit that notification bell, and as always, subscribe.